JCM Fix here with another 2009 Lincoln MKS Fix. Recently while driving, I've noticed that there was a check engine light on the dash and it produced a P2195 code. So in order to diagnose it, I need to go ahead and plug in my scan tool and see what it's all about. Let's do it. As you can see, when the vehicle starts, the check engine light stays on. So what we need to do is diagnose what this check engine light is all about and try to fix it. So here, I'll go ahead and pull out my trusty Altel MaxiPro MP808TS scan tool, which only trusted mechanics like me can use. So let's go ahead and diagnose the issue. All right, with my Altel Bluetooth dongle, I'll go ahead and remove this cover and plug it in. Now let's go ahead and turn on the system. All right, let's go ahead and go to diagnostics. So first, without your foot on the brake, just go ahead and hold down the engine start stop and it'll go into accessory mode. Then from there, you can go ahead and press VIN, auto detect, and allow it to scan. Ford USA. All right, let's go ahead and confirm our vehicle profile. So yes. Okay, the vehicle is equipped with factory installed navigation. Okay, let's go to diagnosis, auto scan and just allow it to scan all the modules within the car. And as you can see, it already has two faults within the PCM powertrain control module. Okay, so it's done scanning, it's at 100%. Let's go ahead and press OK for the PCM powertrain control module. Read codes. All right, since we don't have the engine running, we're just gonna go ahead and use key on, engine off, on demand read codes. It's cycling through all of the actual functions to give me a proper readout. All right, there we have it. So don't worry about the P1000 codes because recently I cleared all the codes and I haven't completed a full drive cycle. So you'll see the P1000 there automatically. But below the P1000, I have a P2195. That particular code states that the HO2S11 heated oxygen sensor right upstream is not switching correctly so the sensor indicates lean all right with that information it shows that there is something wrong in that area in regards to the actual wiring of the oxygen sensor or the oxygen sensor itself yes it could be other things as we press this particular question mark as you see it could be air leaks at the exhaust manifold or it could be a manifold vacuum leak so luckily i'll be removing some of those vacuums to get to the oxygen sensor which is at bank one sensor one so i'm pretty confident that it may be the actual oxygen sensor and if it's not i'll make sure to go to other measures but for now the oxygen sensor was pretty cheap so we'll start with that let's go and with that check engine light i've also found out that the car has not been pushing out enough power as it normally would so you may ask jcm fit what will it take to fix this issue? Well, it's not that hard at all. All I'm gonna use is just simple household tools to get this job done. I have a torque wrench, I have a breaker bar, I also have my Black & Decker drill, but the most important thing is this particular socket right here, which is a 22 millimeter oxygen sensor socket. And on top of that, I'll also have anti-seize, a little bit of penetrating lubricant to ensure that I can remove the oxygen sensor without a problem. So we have a nip and denso oxygen sensor right here, which is for our upstream and we also have a pry bar just in case we need it and some other common household tools keep in mind i'll have a link within the description below for all these tools and its variants if you need help so go ahead and purchase it on amazon.com through my affiliate link all right let's go ahead and pop the hood all right let's go ahead and give you a little frame of reference to which sensor i'm referring to here anytime you see this particular setup towards the firewall we have bank one Towards the front bumper, we have bank two. So here we have an upstream sensor. This here is a heated oxygen sensor, bank two, sensor one. And towards the firewall, here's the one that has an issue. This is bank one, sensor one. The heated oxygen sensor senses the oxygen content in the exhaust flow. So this issue here, the malfunction indicator lamp, the MIL, is activated after a concern is detected on two consecutive drive cycles. So this particular sensor here, which is HO2S11, is the primary fuel control sensor. The next sensor, which is a catalyst monitor sensor, which you cannot see below, bank one, sensor two, that's downstream in the exhaust and it is used to monitor the light off catalyst, which is HO2S12. And so below this, keep in mind they are not the same as the heated oxygen sensors. One way you can tell the difference is that the heated oxygen sensors have a smaller stubby 
knows. But the actual catalyst monitoring sensors is a lot longer and it measures different things. So what we're gonna pay attention to is here, which is bank one, sensor one. So I've already lubricated the area with penetrating fluid. But in order to get to that area without a problem, we need to go ahead and remove this engine cover along with this upper intake manifold plenum. First thing first, let's go ahead and remove this engine cover and set it aside. So first, we need to go ahead and disconnect the crankcase vent tube and the vacuum tube from the air cleaner outlet pipe, which is this. Let's go ahead and do it. And just go ahead and set this aside. And now it's time to loosen the air cleaner to outlet pipe throttle body clamp. This is going to be an eight millimeter bolt. Just like that. Now it's time to loosen the air cleaner outlet pipe to ACL cover clamp, which is right here. This is going to be an eight millimeter socket on this eight millimeter bolt. Now it's time to remove the air cleaner outlet pipe altogether. Pull it out, same thing here. Pull it out, just like that. Now let's get to removing our upper intake manifold. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and remove the throttle body electrical connector. So what we're gonna do is just pull back on this, push down, and pull out, easy as pie, place it aside. So now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the evaporative emissions evap tube from the upper intake manifold. So just go ahead and push in and pull out, just like that, place it aside. And don't forget to use some penetrating fluid well in advance in order to loosen it up so we can get that oxygen sensor off without a problem. Next, we're gonna go ahead and detach the EVAP tube pin type retainer from the upper intake manifold. Just like that. So just go ahead and place it aside and get it out of the way. And now, normally I would just disconnect the brake booster vacuum hose from the intake manifold, but it's really not necessary because once I get this upper intake manifold plenum off, I can easily just move this aside. So there's really no reason to remove this brake booster hose. So I'll just leave it right there. And same thing here. I would normally just go ahead and disconnect the PCV tube from the PCV valve, but there's really no reason to do that because as you can see, once I get this upper intake manifold off, it's easier just to detach the PCV tube from this particular housing just by pulling it up without having to deal with this hard clamp right here. And now it's time to detach the wiring harness retainers from the upper intake manifold. This one is easy because all you gotta do is get a firm grip and just pull up, just like that. Now let's get to the others. Let's get our tool, place it right there within the wedge and push, easy as pie. Same thing here, you just go ahead and set this aside. And the last one, right here. Very easy, guys. I highly recommend getting one of these tools. All right, now it's time to remove the upper intake manifold support bracket bolt. It is also eight millimeters. Black & Decker power tools for the win. Next up, let's remove the fuel tube bracket bolt. This is also eight millimeters as well. Let's go ahead and set it aside for safekeeping. Now let's just move it out of the way ever so slightly. Now let's remove the six bolts from the upper intake manifold. Let's go ahead and count. One, two, three, four, five, six. They are also eight millimeters as well. But keep in mind, these are on more tightly than the other bolts. So your actual household drill may not be able to break them. So first, just break them with your actual wrench. Then you can use your drill to take them off altogether. All right, just slightly break them. And then we'll finish them off with the drill. Now after they are all broken, just go ahead and get your drill. Makes for a quick and easy job. Now let's go ahead and remove the upper intake manifold.
And now, as I mentioned before, now you can easily just remove the bottom portion of this PVC hose. Just like that, really easy. And just go ahead and continue to lift up. As you can see, it comes apart really easily. I've already changed the gaskets on a previous spark plug chain, so no need to change the gaskets at this time. But what I need to do most importantly is just go ahead and block off the lower intake manifold sealing surface. This way no debris can get inside. Let's do it. So next I'll just go ahead and use this bungee cord and prop the upper intake manifold up and this way it can be away from our working space. And now that we have a clean, clear working space, now we can go ahead and get to bank one, sensor one, oxygen sensor right here. Now first step, we need to go ahead and disconnect the heated oxygen sensor electrical connector. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and press in and pull out. Now I'll go ahead and use the exhaust gas oxygen sensor socket to remove the oxygen sensor. Now since we will be going left, we need to ensure that we have enough room to turn it counterclockwise. All right, I have a pretty long extension bar. Let's go ahead and remove it. There we go. That was pretty easy. The longer your extension bar, the easier it is to remove. And from there, we can remove it by hand. Okay, let's go ahead and remove this socket and truly do it by hand. Just grab it at the base and just keep on turning counterclockwise. There we go. As you can see, this thing looks all fouled up. All right, let's go ahead and compare it to our new oxygen sensor. All right, here goes the Denso version. Let's go ahead and compare. All right, looks pretty similar. But I would say I would try to avoid the walker because this is a walker one that I previously purchased in 2019 and it has already failed on me. So hopefully the Denso version will last up to 100,000 miles. And as you can see, they've already put a light coat of anti-seize on it so I don't need to put my own. Good to go. All right, let's go ahead and remove this fastener and install it. All right, time to install. The torque specs for this oxygen sensor will be 35 foot-pounds. Lefty loosey, righty tidy. Let's do it. And remember to tighten at the base. Let's go ahead and set it to 35 foot-pounds. Now we're gonna go clockwise. Did you hear that click? Now that's all you need. 35 foot pounds and you're done. Now let's reconnect the heated oxygen sensor electrical connector. And that does it for this portion, guys. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and place everything back exactly the way I took it off. So if you wanna know how to reinstall it, just watch this video and look at it in reverse order. And so after I place everything back the way I put it, I'll go ahead and reconvene inside the car and check the Altel to see if that malfunction indicator light is still on in regards to this Bank One Sensor One heated oxygen sensor. Let's do it. But before I go inside the car, I wanna make sure you know the correct sequence in order to tighten down these upper intake manifold bolts. So the first one that we'll tighten down, before we get our torque wrench of 89 inch pounds, first we're just gonna go ahead and tighten this one. This is number one. Go ahead and tighten it down. Just like that. And next, this is number two. Then we have number three right here. Number four. Number five. And number six. So keep in mind, this will be tightened down to 89 inch pounds. And voila, now let's go ahead and check the Altel scanner to see if we have any more issues. And for this test, I'm gonna go ahead and do it a different way. I'm gonna do ignition on, engine on read codes. And as you can see, the check engine light is still there at this time, but most likely it needs a couple drive cycles in order to get rid of it. So let's check it out. And I'm back guys. A day has passed and I went through multiple drive cycles. I was able to go to work, come back, run some errands, go to the library, pick up a nice movie, idle, brake, 
hard brake. Sit in traffic for a while and the malfunction indicator lamp, which is also known as a check engine light, did not return. So I'm gonna call this repair good. So the only advice I have is to stay away from the Walker O2 sensor because this five wire O2 sensor here was supposed to last up to 100,000 miles and it barely got me two years. So stay away from Walker and either go with a Denso, so far Denso is working, or OEM Motorcraft. So other than that, we're at 201,055 miles on this 2009 Lincoln MKS and I will call this repair finished. Thank you guys for joining me. Make sure you come back to this channel for all MKS fixes. Have a blessed day.